I've only put a couple screws in here, just enough to hold the gear box together, and I put the cylinder in here to try to black out as much light as possible. If I need to, I'll put some tape over those, but uh, I think for the most part we should be good. Now, I've already pre-installed the um, software for this to my laptop, and I've got the process standing by. Now. Again, it is totally possible to program this just through the trigger and everything else. I recommend getting this. It'll make life so much easier. And then the trigger programming you can do as a, a backup or on site at the event, whatever. Um, plus, there's firmware updates. They do give you a card. I'll uh, put a little bit bigger thing on the screen but the colors that will blink out of the bottom of it when uh, you're trying to program it and what's nice about this uh, with a uh, gates link here is it works both with the Aster and it does work with their big brother uh, Titan I don't know about other ones but um, those two have, according to the website have been approved so, one end will connect right into where your battery connection only was, and the other one will connect into your computer. Before we get into the programming and software part, I just want to go over real quick. There's a couple different status colors that you will see on your USB. I'm going to be putting them on the screen. There's four different colors, I want to say. There's blue. Um, there is going to be a green followed by a red and finally a yellow. Now there's no specific order that these go in when you're going through the programming process, but uh, those four colors, uh, it's good to have a, in mind or keep your quick start guide in your, so if you see them and you're questioning what might be going wrong, these colors will give you an idea. I've got the USB link connected to where your uh, battery connection normally would be and then the USB cable. Now as you can see there's nothing like here but when you look over on to the software computer is registered. Once you see this connected you will see both the blue light light up on the link if it's working correctly and then the computer software it should uh, connect to the USB link here and then it should show the MOSFET. So here we go. Yep, blue lights on it's going to the recognition. Got it. And recognizing it. Okay. Up here, there is an update available, which I will do right now. This is the firmware. Every so often, or maybe not every so often, but there will be times that they will send out firmware updates. Um, I'm guessing you might get an email about it. I'm not sure. I'll look a little heavier into that. Only thing I know is at the moment there is this one when you get connected. Again, another advantage to having that. And now it's going yellow, showing that it's doing some type of update or data transfer. I will say, when uh, you first put the software on for this USB thing, it does make you download a driver update. Uh, there is a step by step what to do. For me, honestly, when I was starting to read it, it was a little complex, but. Uh, when it's downloaded, it comes in as a compressed file. I just unzipped it in its location, and it did all the updates it needed to, and we were connected right away. So Now we can see that firmware is all set. We are good to go. So now, let's jump on into the meat and gritty here. Uh, this is for the uh, sector gear. Um, when it's shown brake and cam. Uh, there's, because there's not any um, spring action or anything, um, I can't really calibrate this yet. I should be able to once the um, gearbox is fully assembled, but as of right now, I just wanted to make sure that it is recognizing it. Um, I wonder, I'll play around with this a little bit. Maybe, you know, kind of jinx myself by putting that cylinder in there. But. Maybe if I uh, can get access to it and move it around, see if that might 
to the center now. Hmm. Doesn't seem to at the moment, but yeah, it was worth a try. Okay. Now we will go to the trigger. And it's saying your trigger does not work properly. Please calibrate it now. All right. So that's what we are going to do. We're going to calibrate. So we want to pull the trigger and press next. So now I pull the trigger. It is all the way in the back. Next, and then please release the trigger. Trigger is released. Next. Now we can see that it has a sensitivity, and as I pull this back, you should see that you see this little status bar. That's what it's showing. So, right somewhere in there is where the fire is. Now, that's quite a pullback, but um, and you see the sensor here. That's showing that it's being blocked all the way. Trigger sensitivity down here, this is what allows you to make it, see how this moved down, you can either make it more sensitive, so right about here it would fire, or if you wanted to move sensitivity way up to where you have to pull almost fully back, that can fire there. And this is just a preference, um, really it really comes down to what you want, um, I personally like it in and I mean, that's a good general area that they have it. I don't want to have to pull all the way back to fire because that's just a longer pull time means longer before you uh, get your shot off. This I'll play around with more and more, but for the time being, I might like that where it is. So, a couple of things that they uh, talk about here now pre cocking. What this means is that um, in your gearbox here, the sector gear is what pulls the spring back and then it goes forward. Pre-cocking is exactly as it sounds where t when it ends the cycle it will have it all the way back so when you pull your trigger to fire instead of just having to wind it all the way back and shooting forward it's already wound all the way back so when you pull it shoots it right away. So effectively pre-cocking is 180 degrees different than how it's typically to where your spring is your um, Piston head is in the resting position, it's all the way forward, and when you pull the trigger, the motor turns and pulls the spring back. For timing, it could be an issue, um, maybe it could be a personal preference. One advantage I could see to the pre cocking would be um, if you're having close quarters combat. So, rate of fire control. Um, this is something that when you're holding it down in uh, full auto or burst. You can play with the amount of, uh, for lack of better wording, uh, space between each shot. So just to slow it down, let's just say 100% was one, two, three. You could change it down to the rate of fire being half that, so it would be one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So it can also have its advantages to where if you just don't want all the BBs to come flying out as you're holding down in full auto, you kind of want to stagger a little bit. Yeah, it's really something where you can play around with. But for now, I'm just going to leave it off. And your trigger stage. Now there's a two-stage trigger option that you can uh, set through the programming here. And in summary, what it means is that uh, you, when you pull your trigger slightly to the setting that you made for to fire it around, it would produce your semi-auto shot or burst, depending on which way you set it. And then as you pull your trigger further back, thus will produce your second choice, whether it's a burst, burst auto, whatever the mix settings there. And now we move on to the selector plate. Okay, so this is what we need to calibrate, and um, that we can do right outside here. So right now it says switch to safe, which technically speaking it would be. All right. Now it's saying switch to semi, which in here is going to be somewhere right about there. Now I wonder if that light is going to have somewhat of an issue. Now again, this is outside of it. I can retouch this up once it gets fully back into my AG if I'm off by a bit. So now I'm going to put next and then 
full auto next so now we'll take a, a look at this is so you know this would be you've turned it all the way forward that's safe click it up some this would be semi in here somewhere magazine simulation I'll have to read a little bit more into that, I'm not exactly sure, but that's something I want to do with vibrations and alerts. Um, you can have warnings set. Um, there's certain vibrations for, you can have vibrations for low batteries and otherwise, I'm not sure if that's in the advanced and expert ones. Um, I'd have to look that up and get up on the screen, but again, that's just some more things that at the current moment I really don't want to have going on when I'm trying this for the first time so for the time being I'm not going to bother with that okay statics this is just your when you fired your BBs yada 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 and we can look at those later and diagnostics it's this would be if you're trying to figure out what might be going wrong this is the page you can come to to try to figure that out but in essence that's what the um, that's your USB link and as far as everything here is concerned, all systems go. That's the, the install of the MOSFED and the software to go with it. So I'll continue on with the rest of the gearbox upgrade.